James, it's casual Friday, which means we don't have to wear pants. And I'm not. It's true. It's true. You're all, all of you should be thankful that it's waist up camera day. A casual Friday. Great day. I'm really, this is, the, when's the last time we filmed something live together? It's probably been five, five to six years. Jeez Louise. Right, totally. Side by side. We, yeah. I, but on purpose though. Yeah. We just, we just did James avoids me. Yeah. At all. I don't understand Marvel United. I do now. You, yes. I do now. Yeah. But you have I'm no so, choice. I had no idea what was going on before that, but now I'm all in on Marvel United. Aaron just bought all the seasons, mm -hmm. including the two that you can't find. Yes, that's right. She picked them up. Just out of spite. Yeah. She I went she, she went to Value Village, the used thrift store, and she was like, hey, how much for this? And they said $1.50, and she got them. And you're like, what? I want that. And she goes, uh-uh-uh. I didn't say the magic word. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Casual Friday. Wow. This is exciting because there's it, it just happens to be a lot going on today, right? Like. There's a reason I'm here live with, with James in his home because it's Mario Day. We're going to go see Mario. And that's because we're growing all this delicious marijuana behind us. Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting the summer garden ready. Yes, They're we're going to see Mario just today. Just vegetables, we promise. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go see Mario. But it also happens to be Star Wars Celebration Day 1. So it's like, it's just, you know, one of those things where everything happens. Everything. Yeah. So we figured it's the right time to get casual. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about all of that and more. Um, but we're going to start with geometry. We're gonna start with Tetris. No, we're not going to start with you. I lied. I'm bad at this. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. this is I I'm thought you were going to ask me some questions. I was getting nervous. <laughs> uh, we do have a question, though. Yes, we do. Which is one of the ones. Email question. If you have an email yes. for us, email us at uh, digitalcharcuterie at gmail.com. I'm saying this while you get the email ready. Oh, it's ready. Digital charcuterie at email.com and we will talk about it on Casual Friday or Super Tuesday. Andrew, what is our email question? So this email comes from Corey Jenkman. Corey! Corey's asking, hello, do you think with the success of Tetris, we will get more making of video game movies? Thanks. Thank you, Corey, for the question. Um, I See, I didn't know Tetris had such like a hot, interesting origin story as a game. So I think we will, Corey. I think we're seeing right now we're in this kind of weird spot where we have a movie about the origin of Tetris. There's a movie coming out like next week about the origin of Air Jordans. Mm -hmm. And there's supposed to be a movie coming out later this year about the origin of Flaming Hot Cheetos. So it's like everything... Every product is getting its time right. to shine. So I I think it's a sure bet that you will get at least one more video game thing. The only thing I can think of is maybe, and I'm, this might be the obvious answer, but because Mario is just getting hotter and hotter, and because it looks like this movie is, you know, not going anywhere, we might get something about the origin of how Mario was created. Because there is a lot of interesting stuff with Miyamoto starting Nintendo and all that. There is, Aaron. I'm going to call over a special guest. Can you just grab me that book right there? Because this is the thing. I don't think I don't think that we're going to get a lot. I think we will get some. And I think, you know, you look at one of my favorite YouTubers, the gaming historian, does a lot mm -hmm. of really cool stuff. But his stuff, like, what, maxes out at an hour? Yeah. So there's not a lot. But the story of Nintendo, how it conquered America. If you haven't read this book, uh, this is one that you should, A, read, if you can read, and B, because Andrew can't. You can't count. We know that based on his newest novels. <laughs> we should also grab those, Aaron. Um, it goes one eleven two. One eleven two. It makes a lot of sense. But yeah. if you haven't read this book, you got to read it. But this book, I think, would translate in a decent movie, not a fantastic movie, I don't think, but a decent movie. Probably a really strong documentary, mm -hmm. um, more so than movie. But I, I, but there are aspects. I think you could turn this into something a little bit more dramatic. Thank you. Yeah. She didn't want to be on the show, so we're putting her to work. I think you put a little, like something dramatic in here, you could probably yeah. tweak it, work it around it. But it's a fantastic story. It goes through like the beginnings to uh, like how 3DS almost bankrupt Nintendo. There's a lot in there. there. I mean, the whole Sony thing, I think that chapter alone could probably make an intriguing movie about how Sony and Nintendo were working together to create the, the Nintendo PlayStation. And then at the last second, Nintendo pulled out and Sony was like, suck it we're gonna 
destroy you in sales up until I think the switch. I think the switch has brought them a lot back. The Wii was obviously huge. So yeah. I, I do think there are stories. I don't think there, there's enough. If Tetris was a hit, I'm not sure if it was, but uh, if there are stories, they'll milk it. But this one, uh, Super Mario, How Nintendo Conquered America, got to read that book. There's definitely, and I mean, 80s period pieces are like, you know, everybody's doing them now. And there's definitely a dramatic story in there to be told, mm -hmm. dramatic along the lines of like Tetris and Air Jordan kind of stories about, hey, it's the early 80s. Atari is gone. The video game crash happened. There's nothing. Video games are dead. But wait, what's this gray box that suddenly everybody in America has? And not only does it take the world by storm and not only does it like star Mario and like have the Mario game that kickstarts everything, but it becomes synonymous. Nintendo becomes a shorthand word for video games. Mm -hmm. Even when a, if a kid had like a Game Gear, whatever, they're like, hey, I'm playing Nintendo. It's like Kleenex. It's like the pants. Yeah, exactly. So I, that's a movie. That's got to be a movie. It should be a movie. I think one movie that you'll see more of, more so than I think the makings of, is 8-Bit Christmas with um, Neil Patrick Harris. Have you seen 8-Bit Christmas? No. 8-Bit Christmas is, it's basically a Christmas story, but it's about Neil Patrick Harris and his daughter, and he tells a story about the Christmas him and his friends tried to get Nintendo, and it was either like nobody would buy Nintendo, and it was bad, and uh, it's and it was sold out everywhere as well. So I, I think those kind of stories, the nostalgic ends of it, are going to be more. I think we'll see more of those type of things play out. Uh, it's a it's an okay movie. It's not bad. It's on uh, HBO Max Crave here in Canada. If you can check it out, Eight okay. Bit Christmas. It's basically a Christmas story. But you see Neil Patrick Harris talking with um, his daughter, and she uh -huh. and they get to her, his mom's house early, and she goes, "What's that?" He goes, "My Nintendo," and then he starts because she wants an iPhone really uh. badly, and he goes, "Well, let me tell you about the time I wanted something badly," and that's the the thing. So I think we'll get more of that. And thanks for the question, Corey. Yeah, we appreciate that, and uh, hopefully this. I still haven't seen Tetris, uh, but this guy says it's pretty nifty. It was fun, Aaron. Mm -hmm. You liked it, right? Yeah, she did. And she was, and true story, you can't see her, but she was uh, hesitant. She didn't, she was, when I, she's like, why are we watching Tetris? And then she ended up liking it like, quite a bit. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's a nice light. It's not like going to change the world, but it's a fun watch. How many Tetris blocks out of 48 do you give it? 46. I don't know. That's, that's not bad. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> Tetris 99. All right, what's next? Well, that's not the only video game movie that exists right now because did you know, James, that there's a little movie called nope. Rampage starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson <laughs> set in Chicago yeah. that is woefully underrated? No. See, you liked it. I, 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 I struggled with it. Okay. Yeah, it was... <laughs> That one was like 28 Tetris blocks out of 40. <laughs> you can like it. I'm not going to judge. I just, I, I don't think we finished it. I was like, I'm done with this. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's one of those movies I... where they, spoilers, where they kill a hero only to be like, nope, he's not dead. I don't think I made it to the rampage part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you made it beforehand when everybody was calm. I re he's just a regular ape. Yeah. This is fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it is Mario Day. Uh, and. We are in a few hours. We're gonna go see the Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, well, by the time this airs, we're in the theater. Hey, there you go. So when you watch this, I will be seeing Luigi throw fireballs. Possibly, nah. you will be seeing Peach stab people. Possibly, because mm -hmm. she's got a spear. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's rated R, right? Mm -hmm. You told yeah, me it's rated it R. Is. I'm gonna believe you. It's, it's anime. <laughs> <laughs> but last night, uh, you treated me yes to the movie to end all movies because. I had not seen Super Mario Brothers starring Robert Hoskins and Jonathan Leguizamo mm -hmm. and Dennison Hopper. And now I have, and it's it's pretty terrific. I like it. It Yeah, it's a movie I watched. I didn't get to see it in the theater. I watched it on, I taped it off of TV on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, when I do my review, I say on demand. It, there was no on demand back then. It was pay-per-view. I taped it off of pay-per-view and it... Uh, yeah, I, me and my sisters, we used to watch that. Well, my one sister especially, we used to watch that like all the time. And I don't, I don't know. It was something that, it was so different from Mario Brothers, but we loved it. And but you got to see it for the first time, and I got to experience you and and Aaron, my wife, watch it for the first time. And it was, 
a treat for me to watch, you two watching, because it is fantastic. There is something about movies from that particular era that are made with that particular style. I'm talking movies like uh, movies like Street Fighter, which you also treated me to. Uh, movies like the first two Ninja Turtles, like Roger Rabbit. There's just there's something about them um, that it has this. Ryan and I from uh, um, Infinity Rewatch, we we call them graffiti movies. They have this <laughs> graffiti kind of tinge to them, and the late '80s, early '90s were full of movies like that. Most of them geared towards kids. Uh, and, and getting to see one for the first time that I had not seen before and having it be so of that era because that Mario Brothers movie, despite the fact that it's mostly set in a, a fictional world, it's not timeless. It is so much of its era. And, which I think at, makes it kind of timeless. Like yeah. I, was, I was noticing yesterday, it was like, because you're when you were commenting on that stuff, it's kind of like that is what it has like in the time i could see like because i was a kid and i just want my but but i could see like the critics how they would hate it but now it takes you back to that era of this is what things look like. it's like when you look at pictures from the 50s and 60s where yes. they, like it's it's like it's like it's stuck in that time period it's like this is now a period a weird period piece and they they probably shouldn't but they don't make them like that anymore it, it yeah it was a unique feel to it very unique that there, there's it's it's a flavor that you can't I can't even really put into words, and this is coming from a guy who tries to make a living out of putting things into words, <laughs> right? But I'm all I can say is there's something about getting to see for the first time a shot of Mario and Luigi driving their big old <laughs> plumbing van through Brooklyn, and not just Brooklyn, but early 90s Brooklyn yeah. when you know New York City looked cool and now it kind of just looks modern and boring um but driving through that Brooklyn with that really like reactive Alan Silvestri music yeah. that just like nah, doo, 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 doo. it's there's nothing else that feels quite like that that is 1000% of that era so getting to see that and it's something that I have never gotten to see before it really was kind of like time traveling there was a moment where they're driving around in that van James where I'm like that's when it hit me. I'm like, holy crap, I'm watching this and it's new to me. Yeah. It, it was wonderful. I had a great time with it. Yeah, you could tell you too, I had seen it because of the reactions you had to certain things that I don't think played out in the night. It's weird. It was oh. like, like there are things that just, they, I think over time, I, I think because of the evolution of, mo like, and I don't, the movie's probably not a good movie for most people, but I think over time with the evolution of movies, and film there's something just so charming about this grotesque movie like even yoshi which looks grotesque is like more charming than he was 30 years ago when i watched it because now it's like he's not perfect but it's kind of perfect like it's very close it looks mm -hmm. better than half the dinosaurs in jurassic world dominion and you're like oh man th there's something going on here and like and the acting is for the most part pretty good like I think Hoskins and Leguizamo are fantastic in it. Yeah, you're not going to get bad performances out of either of those. No, guys. Fiona, Fiona Shaw's really good at mm. that, and then you get Toad is in it, which always makes me happy. Um, even though you don't really, it's if you don't really pay attention, you don't notice that it's Toad. I think it took me like two viewings as a kid to be like that is Toad, and then I fell in love with the movie. But I'm glad you guys both liked it, which is I think three out of three people liking that movie will be a rarity and never happen in the same room ever again <laughs> it's, it was kind of like watching it was kind of like putting a face to a name that you've been hearing for yeah. so long because there are i i can think of like a few old i don't know if it was nintendo power or just a few old magazines that i had as a kid where there would be a screenshot of it they're like this movie's being made right now it's the mario movie we can't wait for it to come out here's a screenshot and it's a screenshot of like bob hoskins uh -huh. like tangled in a web of fungus and I would just look at that and be like, oh, cool. Okay, that's what live action Super Mario looks like. I had another one that was from like the Dick Tracy movie. And it's like Dick Tracy and the kid, yeah. the boy, and they're yeah. eating like scrambled eggs or something. So it's like you have these like little screenshots before you see the movie. Yeah. And finally getting to see it in motion was, so that's that scene where he's tangled in a web of fungus. That's that's insane. So I had, I, I'm really happy that I got to watch it. And now it's going to be a back-to-back -back thing with the new. Yeah, we're about to see that. And one other 
Fisher Stevens, I think, did his best to try to save this movie. <laughs> Harry Kane, he was eating up that scenery, and he's great. And so is the uh, his partner Spike Iggy. And, they play Iggy yeah. and Spike, uh, which doesn't really matter. But that's who they play, and uh, they're both they're they're I, they were always so much fun to watch. Uh, every time I watch it, I don't care what anyone says; those two are a lot of fun. And I did not know Fisher Stevens was going to be in it, and I did not know Fiona Shaw was going to be in it. Those were just treats upon treats. So you're telling me you did not have any toys from this movie growing up? Like there was no, no there was there were some I think sold. I never had any. No, because this movie was everybody. I don't think I think they were rare. Mm. And so like my thing was I wanted to see the movie. Nobody would take me to go see it because I was a kid, so I couldn't go by myself to see this movie. Um, my parents did buy me like I, well they would give me my I bought like the crack magazine I said I had which which isn't really I think but I had the. Uh, the big gulp slurpy plastic collector cup from 7-Eleven. That was, I think that was the extent of what they bought me. But that, they, like it, they would always get me like Mario shirts, sweaters, like things like that and games. But this movie was like, stay, I, steer clear of this one. But then I taped it off TV and they couldn't do anything about that. I'm shocked there weren't at least Happy Meal toys. Did there might have been. I don't. I've never really ate a lot of McDonald's. I have like my Luigi having meal toy from the right. Super Mario Three. I have all the Super Mario Three games. So I guess there might not have been, because you know, I I lied. I used to, my parents. Yeah, when Super Mario figures were available at McDonald's, they would buy me a ton. And actually, I should show you. Can't show you guys because I, hmm. I have this from a gas station. This Koopa flying Koopa Koopa Troop, but the green shell it is the greatest figure of all time. The wing fell off. I just gorilla glue it. It took me to. 30 years 40 years to glue it back mm. uh it is the best figure and it's from a gas station it is so high quality it's phenomenal i'm jealous i want to see this because what you've been there uh well we have a another question email email question and this one is about mario 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 and luigi mario that's that's the thing how many marios between the two of you it's three uh all right so this is from sabrina montanello Sabrina says, hi, guys. Just wanted your thoughts on Mario Brothers at cinema. I have heard some say it will be the biggest movie of the year. What are your thoughts? Thank you, Sabrina, for the question. Wow. The biggest movie of the... I think it'll definitely be the biggest family movie of the year. What's coming out this year? See, that's because there's, there's a Jones. lot of big stuff. There's Indiana Jones. There's Mission Impossible is going to make a lot of money. Mission there's, Impossible. There's no that, way it's not. Yeah, with Tom Cruise, yeah. Top Gun. Um. What's the big December? Oh, it's like Aquaman. I don't think that's. Gonna, I, think, I think Aquaman's no. dead on the dead in the water. I would say definitely, the Super Mario Brothers movie will definitely make the top five. I think Super top Mario. five for I sure. Think, yeah. It could be. Now, I believe on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's check right now because last I checked, it had like a, a very low critic score. It was like fifty percent or something, and it but it was. But wow. the joke's on them because Mario loves tomatoes. That's so he true. won't give them a chance to get rotten. Oh, wait. I hit the Bob Hoskins one. 12, 29% for audience and critic on Rotten Tomatoes for the original Mario Bros. 29 movie. and 29. He needs to be higher than that. Yeah, it does. Uh, I, I don't know. Right now, I think it's split on how people are feeling about this one. But that's the thing with animated family movies. I don't know i think we were talking about this the other day i don't know a single adult who loves you know minions yeah but those movies crack the top 10 every year that they come out so this is the same studio and it's also an ip that everybody loves mm -hmm. kids love mario adults love mario teens maybe love mario there hasn't been a lot for them except maybe odyssey but Everybody loves Mario. So you are going to, they have like no work to do in terms of getting people interested in their product. So I think Sabrina, I think the odds are really, really good that this is going to be one of the top five grossing films of the year. I feel like it's already a sure bet that a sequel is coming, yeah. even though that hasn't been greenlit. And when I say greenlit, I really hope they mean that literally and have more Luigi. Uh, but, you haven't even seen it. You don't even know. So, okay, 54% audience score on mm -hmm. Rotten Tomatoes. That's from 175 reviews, which I still don't consider a lot of reviews. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it, whatever. It's been hovering around there. So, 
Uh, but the audience score, and this is based on over 2,500 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, has a 96% score on, on audience score. So it begs the question, what are critics and audiences watching? And I look, my feelings on Rotten Tomatoes is it's a bunch of uh, jackasses in their mom's basements. It that is. Now, you know, they have 52 YouTube videos a year and they're allowed to do it. So really, I think. I think the, the score should just be from top critics, and there's a negative top critic right away. Yeah. And there will be. People are not going to like the movie because movies aren't for everybody. And people also, I think, are going and expecting too much. That being said, I might not like it. You might not like it. We'll see what happens. Whether or not this is the largest uh, video movie of the year as the cookies are done cooking. That's what that beef means. As long as it's, if it is the large, biggest movie of the year, I think we're close. I do think top five. My dog disagrees. I think top five. Five. Actually, I can. But I'll say this though: yeah. if the audience score is true, and there's an indication, next week is going to be the determining factor. If people go to the theater next weekend to see it, it, I think it stands a chance to get there. But it is a animated film, kids movie. I don't think it's going to make a billion. And Tom Cruise never bet against Timothy Cruise. Don't bet against Tom. Tom is definitely going to be in there, but there's two caveats I forgot about. Oppenheimer and Barbie. Fast X. Oh, no. That's dead. Fast X is going to make a lot of money because they always do. It's not going to do it. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's going to be... I think it's going to make How much did the first Spider-Verse make? I can check for you. I'm assuming it was a bunch of money. I'm curious, though, because it also came out... In the at Christmas time, I believe the first Spider Verse. It was coming out in June, uh, so I'm curious if it'll make as much money. According to Wikipedia, it grossed 384.3 yeah, million. Yeah, I don't think it has the same power that a Mario Brother will have. I think Mario's going to outgrow Spider Verse. That is way less than I thought. Yeah, wow. people just like it. Yeah, nobody wanted to go see it twice though. They're like, I've seen it once. We're good. I think um, I do. Th- I think Mario can outpace that. If I haven't seen it, so I don't know for sure. Uh, but if if it does, if the momentum's there next weekend, if the audience score is any indication, it's going to make a lot of money. The other mm-hmm. problem, though, is because it's a kid's movie, let's say I have a Rotten Tomatoes account, and I'm like, well, that was okay. And then my kid goes to see him. My kid's like, that was the greatest movie ever. Am I upping my audience score to reflect the kid who the movie was made for? And if that's the case, I'm probably not taking my kid to go see it next weekend also. Right. Which could... Bring into mission. So I don't think it's going to be the highest gross movie of the year, but I do think top five definitely and possibly top two or three. That's very likely. Two or three. I mean, Mario is it definitely has more of a pull with kids like 10 and under than Spider-Man does. Mm-hmm. So like a little kid is going to see the Spider-Man trailer and be like, what's that? Then they're going to look at the Mario trailer and be like, it's every color ever. I want that movie right now in my face. So they're going to sell a lot of repeat child tickets. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's possible for Mario to go lower than top five, but I do think it's gonna have a lot of stiff competition just in the summer with Tom Cruise uh-huh. and our friend Miles Morales. And I think our other friend Dominic Toretto, ride or die, because there is a Mario Kart scene in the Mario movie. It but probably is. Okay. It's I not can't. ride or die. Freaking fast and furious. I can't. <laughs> that trailer just it was like 90 minutes long. The trailer. I'm pretty sure the whole movie was in that trailer, and Brie Larson is playing uh, Paul Walker's sister, I guess. So it's like, who? Uh-huh. I, don't, I think I'm guessing. You think she's gonna walk into Dom's um, restaurant and order a tuna salad or whatever? Tuna sandwich. No one likes a tuna here. Yeah. Watch your back. Anyway, <laughs> terrible. I hope though. I mean, good on all these actors for signing these movies because they're making money. Oh yeah. All right. Not as much money though. As. As something else is gonna make, we hope. What's that? It's got lightsabers in it. What? Yeah. Mario three. Mario three versus Sonic three. They're the same movie. That's happening, by the way. That's, so that's I like I like I like the first Sonic movie quite a bit. I enjoyed the second Sonic movie, but my goodness, it was way too long. It just was like there was a point. I think it's I on my birthday, and I was like, "What do you want to watch?" I said, "Sonic 2. So we put it on and she ate it. How long is it? It can't it's be two that hours long. and two minutes. No, it's significantly longer than it needs to be. Yeah, it's two hours and two minutes, and it just kept going and going. And I enjoyed, oh God, right. yeah, and I enjoyed it, <laughs> but it just kept going. And I was like, and that's this Mario Brother movie that's coming out is an hour and a half. I know you're 
hating on that. But these, there's a point in these movies where they need to just stop. And so, like, I think Sonic and Mario, I think an hour and a half is plenty of time to be colorful and zip, zip, zoo, Tanuki suit. Like, I think it's fine. It's enough. Tails was great. Like, we're good. Two hours and two minutes is just too much for these. Like, that's my one of my things with my Pixar movies lately. It's like, you guys are too long and you're trying too hard to be sentimental. Let's just pull it back, reel it in, and just be good like you used to be. What? Two hours and two minutes is long considering Sonic 2 is not about the deep Anything. lore of the Sonic world. Well, it still smurfs with Sonic. Look, I like short stuff, but also I love the Batman. Like yeah. and I love the God. Like there are movies that I love that are long, but they have to justify being long. And this is, we're going to talk about Star Wars. And what I say about the Mandalorian is everybody complains that the episodes are short. And save for the first two episodes this season, I disagree. I mean, I, yes, they're short, but they haven't, they never feel incomplete except for those first two episodes. Mm-hmm. They never feel like, oh man, not everything happened that should happen. Like, I always feel like that was satisfying. Yeah. What was that last short one? Was it the pirate? Because that was, yeah, that, that was, was like 29 minutes. Yeah. And it, it like it had so much in it. It was jam packed. And I'm like, if this would have kept going, we would have been like, this is boring and filler. <laughs> but instead, they, they kind of, I love that the sun has just like faded on us and this light that I have is doing nothing. We're, as we talk about Star Wars, the light is getting darker because it knows, it knows Star Wars is the darkest corner of the internet. Star Wars is dead. It is dead. And Kathleen doesn't have a job anymore. Lizzo but... killed Star Wars. <laughs> but this celebration news, I mean, I woke up to it. I woke up, I looked at my phone and I'm like, oh yeah, Ahsoka is happening. So we got an Ahsoka Bro. trailer, James. We got Acolyte information. We got a tiny bit of skeleton crew information. Uh-huh. We got new movie information which i think we all knew we were getting yeah uh it's we got to temper ourselves for the movie thing so really quickly let me start with the most simple one which is the acolyte um there's a new logo and i like it much better because the old i haven't seen it it's yeah go on their instagram their old logo i felt looked like the logo of like a playstation 2 video game yeah it did and i'm like "Eh," you know i don't hate it but now that i've seen this new one it's just like yeah it's Ooh. sleek, and that ring looks like it means something. It mm. looks like the light that's kind of lighting our faces right now. Like the Echo light? The, ooh, Illuminati confirmed. Like, did the sun just disappear? It did. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the Acolyte is, is I, they're showing footage, but we can't see it because we're not in London, England. And I think that's fair. Yes, if you paid for a ticket, you should get to see footage. Uh, we should just do the rest of this like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. Hello. Hey, governor. I'm from Brooklyn. Hey, Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary Poppins. Who wants to hear a good joke? Hey, I wouldn't like Mary Poppins. Uh, hey, I'll go draw on the sidewalk, Mary Poppins. Maybe that's how Jude Law will sound in Skeleton Crew. <laughs> if only he says Mary Poppins Mary after Poppins. every other word. Hey, Poppins. I'm, uh, Poppins. I'm force sensitive, I am. I've got a lightsaber. Um... <laughs> As <laughs> long as cartoon penguins show up, I'm in. Yes. I haven't seen the new Mary Poppins. Me and half, Me the, neither. half the globe. Yeah. Yeah, you. Um, Skeleton crew is another thing that we don't get to see. Stoked. But Bryce somebody... Dallas Howard back. Yeah, Sorry. she's back. She's great. I'm taking over. It's so, okay. Yeah. Somebody on Twitter was saying that it has mega Amblin vibes. Yeah, I heard exciting. about that. Yeah, it's supposed to be like Goonies in space and stuff, mm-hmm. which and I'm totally fine for. Apparently, Jude Law is force sensitive. Okay. So that's the thing. Well, there's a baby in the room, and, in the room. and it's not Grogu. Hey, it's it's Grog- an even cuter baby. Grogetta. Hey, Grogetta. Hello. We're recording. You're interrupting us. Yeah, she doesn't care. I love you. She heard you say a so. Hi, smiley pants. Uh, Jude lost for a sensitive. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, I have a question for you. Does that? Do you care? Not like, yet. What does for sensitive yeah. mean? Because Mods Kanata sucked. She. Yeah. Well. The thing about the sequel Sucked. trilogy is the sequel trilogy really I had no the idea what force sensitive yeah. was. It's like Maz Kanata kind of knows the force, and also so does Finn kind of hashtag colon asterisk. Well, Maz Kanata was worse because we were told she was one thing, and then we saw the movie, and it's like, no, she just sucked. Yeah. And then like she progressively got worse as the series went on. Yeah. So no offense to Lapita Nuango on this one. No, she's I'm cool. sure she was great as Maz Kanata in an alternate reality where she got to do something. Oh, the jetpack scene of The Last Jedi. If you could cut that, if we could go to Blockbuster in 1999 and cut that out of my copy, that would be great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I don't know about Jude Law. I mean, 
cool. He's forced. Is this supposed to take place during the same time as Mandalorian? I'm not clear on yeah, that. Yeah, okay. they're all within the same. Because the pirates are the bad guys. Yeah, I think just the one pirate. The Faye, one, the one that got away. Yeah, imagine. I mean, the other ones are dead. Oh yeah, because <laughs> as soon as um, and it would be underway. Like if the if Gorian Shanderbill or whatever his name is became a thing, like that would kind of it would be weak if he was the because uh, we know where he goes. Exactly. I thought it was supposed to be him, and then yeah. as soon as he got blown up, I'm like, well, now is that you know that's going to be an anticlimactic show. Um, but if it's this other dude who's like, okay, yeah, that that's he seems like an okay villain. Um, I hope there's more villainous characters than just him because he's he's a little just like you know he looked like that Muppet scary what's his name the 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 dragon Muppet the blue dragon Muppet what's his name gnarly gnarly uh, are you talking about Sam the Eagle no not Sam he looks like Sam Sam the Eagle, the Eagle is frightening blue dragon Muppet mm -hmm. I always forget his name he works with uh, this guy uh, Uncle Deadly that looks like a Dark Crystal character. Yeah, but look, it's Uncle Death. Yeah, that does. Okay, right, yeah, that that's cool. Like right there. That's then, right now. That's him. So that guy would, yeah. But I, you know, I think that that's a, a decent villain for this show. But I hope there's more. I hope there's more bad guys. I hope there's some huts, something. Well, okay. Can mm -hmm. I go a little bit forward? Mm -hmm. If some of the other announcements we got today are any indication, discussing Dave Filoni, who is executive producer of Skeleton Crew, you would have to believe that while the pirate is a main player in it, there is something larger at stake going forward. Right. Because Dave Filoni got a movie, James. Oh, finally. All What all the fans wanted, they got it. Now probably are nonstop complaining about it. Now they will hate it mm -hmm. and they will say, Filoni ruined Star Wars. George Lucas was the only good Star Wars director. Uh -huh. Bring back the Phantom Menace. Uh, and uh, that's that's what Twitter will look Absolutely. like for the next five years. Absolutely accurate. Uh, Star Wars fans, y'all are weird. Uh, but the the Filoni announcement is going to be something that I feel like we almost got promised, but not quite. Which is the idea that all these shows, these Mandalorians and Ahsoka's and whatnot, are culminating in an event. Uh, and at first, I thought that was going to be its own miniseries, like the Defenders. Mm -hmm. And then I thought maybe that's what the Ahsoka show is. That is the event. But now it sounds like it's going to be a motion picture, James. Yeah. I, first of all, I don't trust any Star Wars movie announcements. Mm -hmm. I just don't because we've got, there's whatever. We've been burned before. They had a Patty Jenkins, Jenkins announcement trailer. Yeah. I, but Filoni, obviously, I do trust because we because he's done stuff. Like, we're, we're in that world. However, I will say this. As exciting as it is, and they're, breaking the internet, whatever the hell they want to do. It's fine. But the best announcement they ever had was Book of Boba Fett, which was a complete shock, right? It was like, oh my gosh, a Book of Boba Fett. And I I, I don't mind them announcing the James Mangold thing, because that might not happen, but the James Mangold thing or the other thing. But the Dave Filoni one, and again, I understand celebration. You want everybody to be excited. You want to break the internet. You want everybody talking. It's big news. He's there, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like it, it would have been even cooler and bigger had they waited, held it in their back pocket a little bit, held their chips in, and then like after Ahsoka or around Skeleton Crew time, played that card and been like, by the way, right, bam. But I, I'm wondering if, if the reception of Mandalorian Season 3 is the reason why they announced this one a little bit earlier. It hasn't been the, the ratings apparently have been on the decline, which I think is has been the case for all the Star Wars stuff as of late. They've been kind of slowly going down. So I'm wondering if that is playing a part of it or not. Uh but by but Best Spin Bulletin, I think it was like two or three weeks ago. Uh they reported that we were gonna get three movies announced at celebration. I was hoping we wouldn't get any, but the the only thing that I believe in these announcements obviously the floating one for reasons is the other one the daisy ridley one is because it seems like they really want like it feels like they want to do that and they've had a new writer stephen knight to come in and do it and mangle's doing indiana jones and he's already in that lucasfilm family right and the, the only thing is like have they started the one script the the ray script has started but and the floating one but the james mangled one hasn't started i just don't care the James Mangle one is the one I trust the least to because I'm afraid of like stupid reactionary stuff. I'm afraid of what if Indiana Jones comes out and mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, this wasn't what I wanted. 
And then next thing you know, they start walking it back and Kathleen's like, we have decided to, uh, you know, creative differences have caused us mm -hmm. to decide not to move forward with the mangled feature, right? Because that's just, again, we've been burned before. We can't get excited about a movie until the trailer comes out, until the the, yeah. the movie comes out. Especially but, like you said, if, if Indiana Jones 5 is terrible or not very good and it doesn't make the money, right? he's out. Um, like we saw it happen with Benioff and Weiss. We saw it, uh, it happened so many times. So like, wasn't that, didn't you tell me like eight years ago, the guy who made Slight was supposed to make a Star Wars? It was J.D. Dillard who did Devotion with, uh, that we just talked about Oh, yesterday. that was J.D. Dillard who made that yeah, one. Yeah, he, he, but his movie never, he's out now. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I don't, so, I, I, anyway. I mean, did, has there been any kind of clarification on which of these three is supposed to come first? I don't think so. I I I have to. I haven't had a chance to check it out. We were recording this earlier than it's being uploaded, so I, right. I haven't had a chance to look at all the details yet. But I don't think so. I think they're just being made. Uh, one of them is probably going to be twenty twenty five. I have to imagine one's twenty twenty five. I I kind of suspect it would be the Ray one because they already have Ray. Yeah, that seems the farthest along. How? I, no, sorry. As I'm saying this, the other one is freaking literally Ahsoka and Mandalorian and Boba Fett. Like we already had. Like that's already there. Yeah. So. No, I, yeah, it would have to be one of those two, you'd imagine. And and I feel like the the Ray one. See, Damon Lindelof hated his script. I'm not really sure what that one's that one is because at first it's like, oh my god, why are they doing it? But now, so my hesitation on this movie from the get-go was why are they making this movie if the writers are happy with it? But now it sounds like they have an idea of going forward, and the writer they had was the wrong writer for it. That's what it's sounding like. Maybe that's yeah. what it's more sounding like. So I have a little bit more faith in it. It's not total faith, but a little bit more because it sounds like it wasn't Lindelof was like pitching it. It or maybe he did something happened and he was he was the wrong fit for it. Nothing against his writing. It's just for that what he was doing. He might not have been the right fit. For it. Yeah, and that's something obviously we can only you know really see in hindsight once that movie exists. But Lindelof is. And I don't mean to bash on him because I Lost is like one of my favorite shows of all time. And that was his baby. But Lindelof is very, his writing is very, notice my writing. Look at my writing. It's it's very that, uh, right? Okay. Um, and Star Wars isn't really that kind of thing. Star Wars, uh, Star Wars benefits from uh, uh, lesser writing. Yeah. I mean, when it gets complex, like Last Jedi, it can be beautiful. Um, yeah, but everybody hates it. <laughs> so nobody likes Star Wars, does it? And I mean, then <laughs> like you're right. It can be beautiful when it's complex, like Last Jedi. It can be beautiful when it's the most simple thing in the world, like the first season of Mandalorian. So yeah. it can go either way. Considering it's supposed to be about the new Jedi Order, which is something, you know, arguably that and the Old Republic are the two legends things that fans just have screamed for. And Mangold is going past the old republic he's going before the old republic first so I, I, I kind of like the idea of getting done and then the rebuilding so you get to see yeah the before and the after of it can we talk about these logos because these are beautiful yeah go for these it are, like they're it's this new I, I guess you call it a branding technique that they're doing with their star wars timeline and i like it much better than what they had before before they just had age of republic age of rebellion yeah, age of resistance was, yeah it's, and whatever but now we have this little spreadsheet of logos uh, that's just, well, most of it is logos we've seen before, uh, but it just covers all the time periods from the ancient, ancient times. So the first Jedi, which is mangled stuff. And it's that mosaic from the last Jedi in the little pool. And then you got older public and then you got high Republic. So it's nice that they're acknowledging the older public exists because high Republic mm -hmm. has been kind of mum on it. And then you've got, you venture into, the Republic era, right? Uh, the Clone Wars era, etc. The rise of the Empire, the Age of Rebellion, the New Republic, rise of the First Order, and then at the end you have the uh, New Jedi Order. And those two bookended things, it was so beautiful how they added them because they got just the right amount of pop from the audience. Like people really were excited to see those logos and see those time periods. They are the uncharted waters of star wars that a lot of people have been clamoring for and yet you can already see james you can see the path we're going down where let's say those 
two movies come out tomorrow, back to back. Let's say we get Daisy Ridley in the future and we get James Mangold's super ancient Republic thing. You can already see the pattern where Twitter will be like, these feel too different. We miss the age of stormtroopers, right? So you're not gonna please everybody. We just had a whole new trilogy full of nothing but retreads of Stormtroopers and X-Wings, and a lot of people hated that too. So I'm glad they're going out into these untested waters. They are waters that people have wanted to swim in forever. And then to top it off, the one that is set in the middle of everything is going, again, for like an old Legends feel with that, because Ahsoka drops the phrase, heir to the Empire, yeah, yeah. which is what I call myself mm -hmm. in my own will That's and testament. Don't talk. That's right. That's why I'm not canon. I'm like, I, Andrew Fantasia, heir to the Empire, hereby do swear. Everything I write starts with that. Yeah, it's all exciting. <laughs> Is there one it's that... It's nice that... No, it's 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 nice that that they have... It looks like a plan, and they have this real timeline now where they can live within the timeline. Mm -hmm. That's what I... That's what I like. It's like, okay, so now you have this play playground and go in and play with it that being said it's still i i still get hesitant on everything because if they don't know are they making stories up as they well they are but making things up as they go along if everything's supposed to be connected it's going to be tricky to play with a big time feel like that so you have to be careful what mandalorian does so well is they were like we're after the original trilogy but we're far enough away from the sequel trilogy where we can kind of do whatever the hell we want. Right. And I think they need to, and I, I, that's how they're going to have to treat it. It's going to have to be in between all the stories. Uh, but it is exciting. Which one, which logo do I like the best? Is that what you want? Not to logo, no, but like, let's say all three of these movies were officially existing and they came out tomorrow. Which one are you most excited for? Um, okay, this is going to be weird because they're so different. I love the Mandoverse stuff, uh, but I also love going forward and progressing forward with the story. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, I love the prequel, so I like going back. The Dawn of the Jedi could be the most intriguing of them all. Yeah. Because it's like, because this is one that I think we on Rebel Scum speculated about eons ago, where it's like, we're going to find out how it all came to be. Uh, and there is like the Jedi tree and all that. So like, there's a lot of lore involved with it. What, but if they're going to touch on that, who knows? So that, that kind of gets me... But I think, to be honest, I think right now it is the, the Filoni movie with the Mandoverse because I'm so invested. Like, I just like it all. Yeah. I like the aesthetic of it. I love the characters in it, the designs. I just think they're, they crush the Star Wars. Like, it is 100% pure Star Wars, no ifs, ands, or buts. And if you don't like it, suck on a lightsaber. I don't really, I don't care. I really don't care if you don't like it. But, like, it's so Star Wars. It feels so Star Wars. Sure, there's hit and misses, whatever. So that's the one on the surface. It's the only one I believe is happening anyway, but that's the one that would be my favorite. But the other two, at any moment, at any moment in time, if they come to fruition, could could overtake that. Like as in terms of your excitement. Yes. Them. Yeah. Okay. Um, you. Oh boy, I I love them all. It's so hard for me to choose. Why did I, you make me I choose? I know, I know. I'm I'm going to give you a, a good answer. <laughs> I, I promise. I'm not gonna cop. High on. Republic, the third sequence, just the one, the, the Justina Ireland book, whatever. Um, no, the like, it, I'm really excited. By the way, we're lit like hundreds. the Batman now. We are. Matt Reeves directed it's... this episode. <laughs> Matt, where's your scarf? <laughs> the guy loves his scarf. Um the all three of these excite me so much and i know i just said we have to temper ourselves because these movies haven't have earned us so like i'm not going to jump into the you know pool of excitement i'm not going to do the nesty plunge i'm just going to dip my finger in and be like hmm nesty that's still good i feel like i feel like the ancient ancient jedi has me the most excited and the reason is um, this one yeah, what's yeah. The, what are they calling it? Da officially? Dawn of the Jedi. Dawn of the Jedi, uh, which is a great title. Yeah, no, that, that one. Probably, honestly, if I believed it was happening, it would probably be my most. Favorite. Yeah, that because the idea of a giant epic, like think of movies from the classic Hollywood era. Think of like Ben Hur. Think of Ten Commandments and Cleopatra, like a giant epic, ancient swords and sandals period piece, but it's 
in the Star Wars universe. So everybody is levitating things and there's Wookiees. Um, that makes me really, really happy. And I always think back to that gorgeous piece of music that wasn't used in Rogue One, but it's on the Rogue One soundtrack that Giacchino wrote called Guardians of the Wills. That sounds like it comes from the Ten Commandments. Like it sounds like it's from a Cecil B. DeMille movie. And I just imagine a whole movie that sounds like that. I'm like, I get chills. I'm like, yes, please, please give me that. But of course I'm excited for Filoni stuff too. And I really love that Ray is coming back and we're getting this story. The only thing about the future, about the new Jedi Order thing, that it's not like, I don't see it as a bad thing. I just see it as a puzzling thing is what are they going to do in terms of the threat? Because I feel like if you go back to Sith, you're just sort of treading the same waters. Uh -huh. But I also think the Yuuzhan Vong are really just lame villains. I think you, I think you, I, I've always had this thought. Do you have a thought on it? No, I like, I have no yeah. idea where they could go. Yuuzhan Vong is a great, no. I, my, my thought would be Sith, but you don't do the Sith. You do, there is a threat of a reemergence of this, uh, of the dark side. Mm -hmm. And you have to, I would do like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is what I would do. I would make a Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, and they're trying to find a Sith art of holocron, and they're trying to re reignite the Sith, bring back the Sith, Ooh. and the new and Ray's like, we're screwed. Like, what are we gonna do? We gotta get that. So that's I would make it like an adventure like that. They won't do that. It'll probably be like stormtroopers and lightsaber. But <laughs> that's what I would I would think like because because exactly like the like no threat is bigger than Shivp. And you can't, I don't think you can go right out of the gate bigger than CVP, and you shouldn't. And I think the Filoni thing, what's great about it is it's going to be Thrawn, yeah. right? So you have like that going for it. And then that might, and that'll hopefully bleed into the sequel trilogy a little. But, but you, I don't think you should go off the, out of the gate like that. And I think you do like a one off Indiana Jones style. The Sith are trying to make a comeback, but they're like, but they're maybe force sensitive, but they don't know how to tap into it. They might be shunned by Ray. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But there's like we can learn the, the way the dark side and and all the stuff that CDP preaches in the prequel, like all that stuff. They can try to gather that information and bring back the Sith and maybe expel the rule of two and try to take over the galaxy as a large group or something like that. Because then you bring back the Sith, which are great, mm -hmm. right? But you don't want to you don't want to do what you've done with them already, right? And so I, I think there's ways to play around it with that because it's also part of the Star Wars universe is Sith. Like it's, it's like it's, yeah. it's like if they're gonna have Jedi, you gotta have this. And I would rather see them than use on Vong. Yeah, I think that for me, if I was doing it, that's what I, I would do something like that. What Keep if it's simple? Here's some synergy for you. What if Dawn of the Jedi ancient stuff? There's like a a Sith Sauron who's walking around doing terrible things, yeah. and then the Ray movie. Some people are trying to resurrect Sauron, yeah, like, a la Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah, let's that, bring them back. That would also work. Yeah, there's, oh. but it's got. to I think it's got to be simple like that. And like, Sauron's a great thing because he's not, he's nothing. It's all his minions doing his dirty work, right? Mm -hmm. And you could, yeah, that's. I think for me, I would go in that direction. Maybe for both of them, but I think, yeah, you're. I think that would also work. Like something, and for me, Star Wars is more Lord of the Rings than Marvel, anyway. Yes, and I think. Yeah, I, but I would keep it small. I wouldn't make the villain a huge threat, but I would make, I would, but there would be the possibility of like Lord of the Rings, like Sauron's not a big threat, but if he comes back, we're screwed. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. how I would kind of do it. And I wouldn't make, see, it would have been perfect with Palpatine if there was a way to resurrect Palpatine. If that, but, yeah. but no more Shivi, like mm -hmm. keep him out of it. But yeah, you could do that. Something I would, that's what I would do. Keep it along. Like the threat is here. We're here. We can't let this happen. And as the movie goes on, you get closer and closer. And then you finish the movie, but you have to leave that much of the door open so that the next movie, it's kind of like I said this before, where in, the, in A New Hope, Vader spins away. And probably when you saw it, and for people who watched that in the theater in 77, they were probably like, well, everyone's dead. Right. But because he's only spinning away, you leave the door open for him to come back. And when he comes back, no, you can't be like, how oh, did he survive? You're like, oh, I guess he just, straightened his ship out and flew back uh -huh. and that i think you do something small like that not exactly but something like that keep the door open and keep it but keep it simple stupid and if each of these plays by well no never mind the felony one won't do it but if ancient jedi and new jedi play by those rules then you've got two new potential trilogies on your hands yep and they have to be trilogies but unlike the skywalker saga they need to leave the door open 
for part four. Yes. And, you know, this won't make James happy, but especially the ancient Jedi, if you want to be like three and a half hour long movies, that is fine. If they justify it, I love Lord of the Rings, but you got to, it's got to be justified. If you're on the scale of Lord of the Rings, do it. That Mario brother movie yesterday, 93 Mario brother, that couldn't be three hours. No, it couldn't. Exactly. It's not that kind of movie, but, and also I know I say this as if people are friggin' watching from Lucasfilm, but I don't care anymore. Also, no one's watching. <laughs> please, please make lots of behind the scenes footage like you did with the prequels. Please yeah. treat it with love so that we have a reason to buy your physical media. Mm-hmm. Right. Bob Iger, want, he, when he came back, one of the things he said was we want to focus on our physical media again. Because, you know, for all these Marvel movies that are the most popular things in the world, those Blu-rays have like two features on them. And one of them is a gag reel, right? Like, it's like, show us how you made these beautiful stories. Mm -hmm. So uh, start doing that more. So like the director and the Jedi was good, but it was like a prequel movie would have had 10 of those. Yeah, 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 for sure. Just get back to that because people love that. There's nobody who's like, I hated those special features. Oh, it was me. Except James. I love him. No, I'm joking. I love him. I love him. And bring All back right. Kidster because he's in the comics. Kidster. Did you know that? He's, yeah, I did. Yeah. You show me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. Right. I'm still excited, though, even though yeah. they don't exist yet. And this is like Mario today. We got more Star Wars Celebration all weekend. Keep your eyes peeled here and on Rebel Scum Podcast for more of information on that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it's Easter, too. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. That's right. Lots of chocolate. There's a chocolate cookie in front of me right now. And I'm going to yeah. finish it once I can start chewing without annoying you. So that's what's going to happen. All right. James, you're a Jedi, right? No, I'm a Sith. You're like a Sith? father before me. I'm a pirate. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you I'm look you look like Uncle Deadly. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining us for Casual Friday. Again, if you have any questions, you can email us at, uh, what's our email again? DigitalCharcuterie at Digital, gmail.com? Yeah, DigitalCharcuterie at gmail.com. That's where you can send all your questions. And if you happen to be Dave Filoni and your question is, would you guys like to help us come write movies? My answer is yes. I don't know about you. But yep. My answer is sure. Absolutely. I will do it for half of what you're paying your other writers. I won't. Double. Because I need the work. So, yeah. Oh, I'm going to charge double. <laughs> That's fair. So between us, you're getting a normal writer's <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time on Casual Friday. Adios.